Hi everyone, my name is Sam Parry. I'm a maths teacher here at Reeves College and today I'm producing a little video just about what to expect with regards to maths and English studies next year. And hopefully by the end of the video, you're feeling more confident, happier, less stressed, less anxious about what the year ahead will look like. And uh, yeah, hopefully by the end of the video, we've achieved those goals. So I'm gonna try and do that by talking about these four key points. So our lessons, okay, what they're gonna look like, our expectations, okay, you know, the things we expect you to bring to the table, the PLC, so that's the building in which we have our maths and English lessons. And we'll talk to you about the growth mindset. And you may be thinking, Sam, I don't really know what the growth mindset is. I'll talk you through what it is. I'll introduce the ideas behind it. And then hopefully those ideas are things you can put into practice next year in order for you to you know, make the most progress, get the most out of next year. Okay? But we'll start with our lessons. So you will have two time table sessions each week, okay, per subject. So if you're studying maths and English with us, you will have four lessons each week. If you're doing just maths, you'll have two lessons, or if you're doing just English, you'll also have just two lessons, okay? However, if you're doing both subjects, four lessons each week. We're gonna have a blended learning approach, and this is something we used last year, and it worked really well, so we're keeping it for this year, where you're gonna have a mixture of online and face-to-face -face lessons, okay? These combined together will prepare you for your exams by the end of the year. And regardless whether it's online or face-to-face, -face, approach the lesson, ready to learn, get stuck into it. The more you put in, the more you will get out, okay? So whether it be online or face-to-face, -face, attack it with everything you've got. Give it your best go, okay? The lesson duration is an hour and 25 minutes, okay? So that gives you a rough indication of how long the lessons last. And you may be thinking, sound that's slightly longer than what I'm used to at high school or what I've had in the past. But think about, well, what we try and do over the summer is try and plan lessons that are engaging and exam relevant. So those hour and 25 minutes really are you know, put to the test. We really do try and get the most out of them in order to prepare you for that exam. Because we know you're here not to mess around, you're here to try and make progress. And we plan our lessons to ensure that happens, okay? We make sure that they build on what you know and that you work on that upwards trajectory to where you want to be, okay? So we design them to be fun, engaging, exam relevant. So we're going to try and make every minute count of every lesson, okay? But that's what on our part, we're gonna plan those lessons, but on your part, you need to get stuck into them as well, okay? Let's look next at our expectations. And when I wrote this PowerPoint, when I put it together, I thought, are these expectations fair? And will you agree with them? Do you think these are you know, fair things to ask of students? And hopefully you do agree. Arriving on time. Hopefully you will think, yeah, arriving on time. That's an important life skill, regardless of school, but beyond that, job interviews, when you get a job, you know, just anything, social events, arriving on time, okay? Bring the correct equipment, whether that be for maths or English, arrive with the correct equipment. So bear minimum pen, okay? My students last year didn't bring a pen, nightmare. Because it shows me, are they really ready to learn if they're not bringing the, a pen to the lesson? It eats up valuable lesson time, having to distribute things. So if you can bring your own equipment, boom, it already shows to the teacher, this student's on it, okay? That's the, that, the two things you can do before you even walk into a classroom, you know you're on to a winner. Enter the lesson ready to learn. And that's all about your attitude, okay? That's something where you're like, right, I'm gonna get stuck into this. Regardless whether it be maths or English, you walk into that classroom and you're like a sponge. You're gonna try and sponge up with as much information as possible and give it your best effort, okay? And then, last one, I like this one. Tackle everything to the best of your ability. I can't ask for anything more from my students unless they give it, like, if they've done their best, I can't ask for anything more. And that's the same for me, for any other teacher. If you've given it your best effort, we can't ask for much more than that. So try and enter every lesson ready to learn and try and give everything a go to the best of your ability, okay? And if you can tick off those four things, your teacher will be very happy with you by the end of the year. And not only that, you'll be happy with yourself because I can guarantee you'll be making progress. You'll be leaving the year better than when you started if you can tick off those four things, okay? Now, the PLC building is this lovely building here and that's where all your maths and English lessons are gonna take place. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna transition myself from here to the outside of the building. I'm gonna give you a little tour, okay? So, we'll head over outside. Hi everyone, so this is the PLC building from the outside. We're gonna go inside, this is where all the maths and English classrooms are, the maths office, the English office, as well as the intervention rooms. Okay, right, in we go. Right guys, so the third place that you'll see on the right hand side as you enter is the English office. This English office is where all the English staff are. So if you have any English questions or inquiries, okay, just knock on the door and then you'll be able to enter. If you look here, you'll see some vending machines. So if you need any snacks or drinks, you'll have a vending machine there for you as well. 
If you come this way a little bit further, down this corridor, down the right hand side as you enter, we have the boys and girls toilets as well as the disabled toilet as well. Okay, so they're all downstairs. Now you'll see some stairs, I'm going to go up these now because I'll show you the upstairs of the PLC. The PLC is a two story building with a downstairs and an upstairs. Okay, upstairs we have a classroom or a classrooms, should I say, which go down that way a little bit and then also down here. If you are chosen for English intervention, it is this room here, L25. Okay? Now, just down the corridor, there's more classrooms. There's not much more to show, but it's good for you to see down there that that's where they kind of look like. We're going to head downstairs now. I'm going to show you the maths office and then a few more of the classrooms. Okay, so this way towards the maths office. So as you come in through the main entrance, follow it straight through. Take a right, and then the maths office is this one here. So, any maths questions or queries, knock on the door. A member of the maths team will answer it to help you and sort you out. Down the corridor, which is where I'm going to go now, is the maths intervention room, as well as some of the other offices. There we go. And then that's it really. So a bit of a taste of what the college looks like, what the building looks like. Maths rooms and English rooms upstairs and downstairs, as well as where the toilets are, as well as where the maths offices are as well. Hopefully that was beneficial. Right, you've had a little tour. You know where the classrooms are, the toilets, the offices. Yeah, you know, you know the drill now. You know what this building looks like. So hopefully now, when you come to the college and you go into your first maths English lesson, this building won't be too intimidating. You know your way around it a little bit better and you know where to go. That's hopefully what we've achieved with that little tour there. Now, the last thing we'll talk about is the growth mindset, okay? And the growth mindset is something that I think every student should try and put into place. And it's easier said than done, I know, because our brains work in mysterious and wonderful ways. But if we can try and achieve some of these points here and understand some of these points, then you're going to kind of change your brain from being a fixed mindset, which is locked in to something that allows growth, okay? And it's all about growth, okay? So... Abilities can be developed through hard work and commitment. So what the growth mindset says, it says your skills, your abilities, your intelligence, okay, regardless of your current level, it can be grown, it can develop through hard work and commitment. And the good news is each and every one of us is able to work hard and we're able to be committed. Okay, so regardless of where we're at, we work hard and if we stay committed to our studies, we can develop our, our skills and our abilities. Okay, so I love that. I like that as a start. The next thing I really like is errors are a natural part of learning. Mistakes are okay. In fact, I still make mistakes to this day and they're fine because it's part of the process. After you make a mistake, you learn how not to do something, which then allows you to learn to do it the correct way. So if anything, mistakes are quite good. Challenges are opportunities to grow. So challenges are excellent because they allow us to kind of push ourselves and like I say, opportunities to grow, allows us to see if we can tackle something. So you may get given a difficult question, you think, oh, you may think, I don't want to do this, can't be bothered, no, not feeling it, throw in the towel. Right there, you're going to stay the same. However, if you give it a go, you may get it right. You may make a mistake, but mistakes are fine. We know they're okay. So you may make a mistake, you learn from it. You give it a go, you get it right, you've grown. So really, anything that you think is a bit of a challenge, get stuck into it, give it a good effort, okay? And that's one. Effort is a path to progress. Regardless of your entry grade or anything like that, all we want to do as teachers is see you do, you know, make progress. Go in that upward trajectory where you leave the college better than when you entered, okay? And effort is something that we're going to put in as teachers and it's something we want to see you guys put in as well as students. Path to progress. We want every student to make progress, regardless of anything, okay? So make sure if we're ticking these boxes, not only us as teachers, but you guys as well, that we work hard and we stay committed, that errors are okay, they're a natural part of learning, that challenges are good and that we should rise to them, give them a go, and that we see that effort is a path to progress, then we can change, like I say, this locked in mindset to something that allows growth and allows us to get better. It's about saying, I can, instead of I can't. And I want to give you a little personal like backstory, a little personal example from my history where I've applied a growth mindset, where it's allowed me to get somewhere where I've wanted to be. And it comes down to my driving lessons. Now, I'll put my pen away for this. When I learned to drive, 
At the very start, I wasn't very good. I was stalling the car a lot. I actually used to think my left foot and my right foot couldn't work together, okay? They just, they were, they were just, they weren't compatible. So I was like, this isn't it. I can't do this. Like, I've hit a brick wall. But I said, instead of saying like, I can't do this, I saw it as a challenge. And I saw my mistakes as like part of the process. I was like, no, no mistakes happen. That's fine. It's a challenge. Let's get stuck into it. So I stuck at my lessons. I stayed committed and I worked hard, okay? And I kept going. I was making steady and sh steady but slow progress. And then my driving instructor said to me, I think you're ready for your test. And I'm like, oof. So kept, kept working hard, stayed committed to my lessons. Okay, I didn't ever just ring up and I'm not really feeling it today. Every Monday for an hour and a half, I had my lesson and then I did my test. I passed first time. And if you'd have said that at the very start of my journey, that you would, I would have passed first time, I'd be like, no chance. My left and right foot don't work too well. Okay, however, I still got it. I stayed committed. I understood that errors were fine and I just kept my effort up. I didn't let it beat me. And then, like I say, I passed my test first time. So the growth mindset helped me drive. If it can help me drive, I'm sure it can help you guys in your studies with Master English with us here at VC College next year. Okay, right. Hopefully this video has given you a little idea of the lessons, the expectations we have as teachers, the building itself, and then also a little bit about the growth mindset there chucked in at the end as well. Looking forward to seeing you in September. We're gonna do our best as teachers to make this year the best every year you've had with regards to your maths and English studies. We're gonna do everything we can on our end. We'd love to see you guys do everything you can on your end. And then together, hopefully, we can smash it and make this a really good year, a good year to remember, okay? Well guys, we'll see you soon. And yeah, enjoy the rest of your summer. And that's it, thank you.